I haven't always been the person I would become. If that sounds like a paradox, let me assure you, it is. But it was something I recently heard, and I'm going to be focusing on that a lot now. I'm going to really be unpacking that. That's part of why I wanted to make this video. Let's unpack that paradox. I have not always been the person I would become. I feel like my entire life, in present day, whatever year and what that was and whatever age I was at that point, I thought, man, something I'm lacking is maturity and wisdom and knowledge. If only I had more of those things, then I could feel like I'm more in control of what's going on here. But for my lack of wisdom and knowledge and maturity, I'm doing the best I can. Because life experience helps get you further in life and helps you know how to manage and negotiate, etc. I haven't always been the person I would become. So it's interesting because, let's go ahead and talk about cancel culture. And that's, that's what's going on. People that talk on Twitter get their careers canceled over something that they say that goes that somehow justifies past behavior back before it was not allowed. And you know, that's, that's the thing to imagine saying, I wish that I, I miss the way things were. I miss the way things used to be before there was cancel culture. And that's the whole problem is back in the days before cancel culture. That's the part people miss. Well, because the rules were different. Well, the rules have changed and the rules will always be changing and evolving. Uh, another saying is this, that comedy doesn't age well. Comedy doesn't age well. Because what is comedy? It's ultimately finding the line, getting right up to it and not crossing it. And that's what's funny. Well, what's funny 30 years ago may mean that you're a bigot today. Uh, if you say that word or make some kind of statement like that, things, the rules are constantly changing. So if we're always held to a standard before the rules have been changed, how far do we go back before we're okay, before we're safe? What I say is this, can we treat each other with, with mercy? Can we treat each other with grace in this? I can tell you firsthand, I haven't always been the person I would become. This 40 year old version of me is a lot more insightful than the 17 year old version or the 25 year old version or the 39 year old version. There's only certain things you can learn from life experience. And ultimately, it's a bit arbitrary as far as what the rules are today because they can easily change five years from now. A lot of people are predicting that the next thing that's going to get people canceled is as far as how elderly people are treated and looked down on and pushed aside. Same thing with, with homeless people. It's, it's a trope in movies that you'll see where if someone's homeless and they're the crazy person and they're just there for comedic effect and they get treated very poorly and they get laughed at because of that. So I think in the future, that's going to change. I think the way we take care of older people and treat them and perceive them in society, I think that's going to change. So, but if you judge it on today's standard, things are more acceptable when it comes to that. So we don't know what the rules are going to be in the future, but we're doing the best we can with the knowledge that we have right now. So again, even for all of us, uh, we're currently not the versions of ourselves that we will eventually become. And ultimately, again, how far do we want to go back to really crucify a person for what they did or said or believed before? I mean, it's funny because even when you think about President Obama, well, that his first term, he was against gay marriage. He only approved it, made it legal in his second term. So for all of those that that's important to, well, which Obama did, it, was he two different versions of a person? Was he two different people? Because ultimately, even he changed his perspective based on collective society. So his first term is a completely different concept compared to the second. So how do we unpack that? How do we manage that? How do we deal with that? Ultimately, I think we have to just accept that what we believe and think and perceive now is largely going to change 10 years from now. And ultimately, 
even if you're on your best behavior, to where there's no way you can be canceled five or 10 years from now, you're only still looking at it by today's standards. I've given a few examples of things I think that are gonna be taboo years from now, but what else? Enough time passes, there's gonna be more things that are taboo, and we couldn't have known today. We were on our best behavior for this year. But your best behavior this year is not necessarily your best behavior 10 years from now or 20 years from now. In the same way that comedy never can age well because it's always pushing that envelope. We can look at, my wife and I were just talking about this, we can look at episodes of The Office, of Seinfeld, of Friends, very, very popular TV series, some of the most successful ever. You go back and watch those episodes, they don't line up with today's expectations, especially when it comes to woke culture and, and making sure that certain groups are not discriminated against. I mean, the most popular TV shows. So what does that tell you about the actors that were in them and the networks that produced them and the fact that they have such a large fan base? It tells you that people collectively believe things were okay at a certain time and now they've collectively changed their mind. And that's fine. That's fine to become more enlightened and to move forward in society, to not discriminate against certain people, to, to treat people with respect. Those are good things, that's important. But ultimately I think that's why comedy does age so poorly and why people do end up getting canceled because we used to treat certain groups of people poorly and women specifically, we could even go back before we get into certain races and ethnicities and gender identification, whatever, we can, we can look at that. So what we have to ask ourselves right now what groups of people are we dismissing? Do we not take seriously? Do we turn into punchlines? And if you can answer that question, good. You've just predicted the future five or 10 years from now. But give it enough time, there's gonna be more people on that, that group. So here's, when it comes to cancel culture, no one's really safe. No one can really win. I think. The solution here is to have an open, honest conversation to steer this back a little bit towards the middle to where we can accept our own weaknesses and follies based on the time that we live in. And to the best of our ability to treat all people with respect and care, to not look down on people, to by default not think that we're better than other people because we believe or see things a certain way. If we just treat other people with respect and don't make a certain group a punchline, that's the best way we can prepare for the future for what eventually will become cancel culture taboo. But as for what's already happened, that's already in the past. Dukes of Hazard was a very popular TV show when I was a kid. I had the car, I had the General Lee with the Confederate flag, and as a four-year-old boy, I knew nothing about that. I just knew that I had the two guys there, Bo and Luke, and I would make the car jump. Does that mean that I should be canceled for a toy that I had when I was four years old and my favorite TV show at the time? Wasn't the only one watching the show, buying the toys, making that a hit show. Cancel culture, forgiveness, grace, common sense. Your comments, they belong right here.